All right, everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in the New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Might sound a little strange today, because, well, we're down in the living room. Why? Because uh, all of uh, Casa de Online Big Blue is getting carpeted on Saturday, so all my equipment is broken down upstairs, so we're going to have to record this downstairs. Wasn't going to do a video today. Did a Nick video, but I wanted to talk about something. I wanted to talk about the Giants and the draft, which is a week away. You know, what story, any rumors, any possibilities, anything such as that. And a subscriber posed to me a question, and I wanted to do just a quick video to answer his question. Now, rumors for the New York Giants in this draft. Lord only knows. <laughs> I mean, they could trade up. They could trade down. They could trade sideways. They could stand pat. They could take a defensive player. They could take an offensive lineman. They could go with a wide receiver. Nobody knows. There is just too much information with this number 11 pick. And I've said this before. I think in some ways this 11th overall pick is a vital pick in this draft. Because with potentially four to five quarterbacks going in the top 10, this pick we will allow a team to get a top five talent. And I'm not saying talent in regards to someone that went seventh overall. I'm talking about talents in reference to if you look at the big board and say, okay, these are our top 32 players. I think you can get a top five talent player at 11 and pay him an 11th overall salary. And it opens up the potential for a trade back. If a team, let's say one of the quarterbacks falls, let's say Mac Jones falls. I don't think he's going number three overall to the 49ers. I don't think you give up all those assets for Mac Jones. But how many people thought that Chicago was going to trade up one spot to get Mitchell Trubisky? But I think that is a diagram for disaster. And I think the Bears proved that. So I don't see the 49ers reaching for Mac Jones. I don't. I don't. You know, it it was funny because a scout said it best. And I was reading some scout notes that... 80% of the times, Mac Jones makes plays worse (laughs) by his own volition. So I I just can't see a organization trading those assets to take him third overall when potentially they could have grabbed him at 10 or, or maybe even beyond. But who knows what the Giants are. I'm going to have a draft video, of course, on the 26th, which is Monday. I don't know if I'm going to do a video or a live stream. If you have an opinion on which one you want to see, if you want me to unveil my topic on Monday on a live stream, I can do that. Um, maybe maybe I'll do it like an Oscar night and have an envelope and everything. Dress up in a all-blue tuxedo. Who knows? Could have some fun with it. But yeah, leave it in the, uh, leave it in the comments if you, want me to do a li- if you want me to unveil it live or do you want me to um, – or if you just want me to do it as a video itself. But – Lord knows what the Giants are going to do. Anyone that tells you they know what the Giants are going to do don't know anything. Don't even listen. Because it's all garbage. I love how people say, well, the Giants are looking at these five players. And I, and I love it because you know people always ask me, well, who, you, who would you pick? Who are you picking? And I say the same thing. I, I, I'm going to take a guy that's in college, currently in college. <laughs> or currently had just left college. That's, that's, a, that's, that, that's, one of the, that's who I'm taking. I'm not taking a guy without college experience. And people are like, oh, that's. But you, you never know. But an interesting question was posed to me. What if Justin Fields or Trey Lance fell to 11? Now, the question was, what do you think the Giants would do? And what would, he, what would you do? Tim over at Online Big Blue. And be honest, like I said, if that if one of those, if Fields or Lance dropped to 11, you know, Giants, of course, are going to trade the pick. They're going to trade back. You have to. You have to build your assets. And you could potentially find a team that will swap first rounders and probably give you another first rounder and probably another ancillary pick like a sixth or seventh rounder. I think the Giants would do that because the Giants don't, in regards to drafting some ways, they don't, outside of people like LT, who who was kind of a knucklehead in North Carolina, but you, but you saw the, uh, you saw the talent. I mean, Odell at LSU was not, was not, was not what he was in the pros. But it's not like they were taking a prom child. And the Giants usually don't take prom childs. And when they do, it usually turns out pretty bad. So, uh, I mean, y- you have to trade back. Plain and simple, fair enough. 
you got you got you got to push back. Now, of course, if it was me, and I've said this a million times, if Trey Lance or Justin Fields falls to eleven, I'm probably going to take the quarterback because I have zero faith in Daniel Jones. And I know people are like you're bashing Daniel Jones again. I had one person that was a subscriber, and thank God they left the channel because they were too stupid to watch, anyways. Because I always told him, he's like, well, you've been bashing Daniel Jones for two years. No, I haven't been bashing Daniel Jones for two years. I didn't get swept up in the hype during his rookie season, but I didn't bash him. Most of his touchdowns came in three games, but I didn't bash him. I just point out his falls, faults, falls, fault, his faults, his flaws, and his deficiencies. That's all I point out. And I also tell you the things he does well. But I am not confident that he is going to lead this team for the next five years. I like Justin Fields. And I know people are like, well, he's an Ohio State quarterback. You can't take an Ohio State quarterback. You can't. Why not? There was no such thing as a college team curse when it comes to a position. There's just a law of averages. So you, you, you can't say that. It's, it's, and then you're going to say, well, it's a system. Well, you know what? If you go back to Ohio State's history, they've had a lot of different coaches, a lot of different systems. So you're going to say they were running the same system for the last 50 years? Justin Fields, to me, has this innate ability. He, he does not have the escapability of a Lamar Jackson. But he, has, he, he just has this presence in the pocket that I like it. I like the way he moves. He's got a fluidity. He's, he's, he's keeping his eyes down the field, but he's looking through his progressions. Now, of course, this is just in college. Lord knows what happens when you get to the pros. But I feel in some, I personally think that, I think Fields were gonna, is going to still go to the 49ers. I feel that way. I really do. But because I do think he is a top, I do think he is a top five talent. I think if you're looking, you're ranking your quarterbacks is going to be Trevor Lawrence. I think Justin Fields, and then I would go Trey Lance. And like I said, I, I I'm not I'm not high. <laughs> I'm not high on the kid from BYU. Not high on him. I I I, I know he's. And then if you want to talk about BYU quarterbacks, the last great quarterback that came out of BYU was Robbie Bosco. Go look that name up. And he went fourth overall to, I think he went to Green Bay. Not fourth overall. He went to the fourth round of Green Bay, and he blew out his shoulder. Well, people talk about Jim Mann and Steve Young, but yeah, I just don't see it. I just, I just, I'm, and again, I'm not picking on his school. I'm not being one of those people. I just, I just, and like I said there, even Lewis Reddick pointed out when they were all like, well, did you see his pro day, how he went to the left and threw to the right and dropped the corner across the body and dropped the corner and the you know, ball in the corner of the end zone? Lewis Riddick rightfully pointed out, Sam Darnold did the same thing in a game. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. And then the question was, what happens if Trey Lance is there? Lance the dance. You know, I would still trade back if Lance was there. I think Lance is going to be a project pick. I think he's like two years away from making, I would say, an impact. I think he probably would have been better off staying another year in school. But I understand when the call of the NFL is there that you go for it. I didn't understand the fact that the 2020 class does not look like it's going to be a, a, a premium class for quarterbacks. That's probably why he didn't come out. That's why I would have stayed. And you know, and if I thought I had the talent, I would roll the dice on the talent. I thought the talent that I think I have, but I understand why it came out. But this isn't like in the this isn't like before the rookie pool, you know, where if if you came out and you were taken third and then went down to fourteenth the next year, you lose you know billions of dollars. You don't lose billions, but you lose tons of you lose a lot of money. The rookie pulled is kind of is kind of eliminated that because of uh, Sam Bradford. So I mean I'm uh, I would have stayed in. You probably would have been free the first or second overall pick. I don't know if he's going to go to Atlanta. Matt Ryan's still playing at a high enough level that Atlanta can get some weapons and compete. Kyle Pitts could be going to Atlanta, but like I said, if Trey Lance was there, I'm trading back. Justin Fields there. I'm taking Justin. 
And again, this is Tell the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, you could subscribe. If you're green that play thing, you know what I mean? That'd be awesome.